Hi everyone. In this brief tutorial, I will show you how to check package dependencies in Python. If you have ever tried to install Python modules locally that rely on many other packages, such as TensorFlow or Theano, you may have experienced issues with package dependencies. To understand these dependencies, we can check them with pip, conda, and third-party packages. Before we get started, I'll just mention that one of the main reasons why I use Google Colab instead of running an IDE locally on my computer is to avoid these package dependency issues. You can also create a virtual environment if you want to work with complex packages such as TensorFlow. Great, let's get started. So I'll first show how to check package dependencies with pip, and then I'll highlight one of the third party packages we'll check other dependencies with the pip dep tree package. So currently I'm in Google Colab and to run pip, I'll have to start it with an exclamation point. If you're running this locally on your IDE, you may have to switch this with a dollar sign. And if you're in Anaconda Jupiter locally, you can just keep the exclamation point. So if we want to check the current packages we have within Google Colab, we can run pip freeze. And this gives us all the current packages that are we have access to and are installed. And we can see that there are a lot of them. And this makes sense given that this is a web IDE for Google. So we have access to a lot of packages. So it lists, lists the packages on the left hand side here. So we can see AstroPy. And then we can also see the current version that's installed. Great. So moving on, we can also do this with the pip dep tree. And we'll run this in a similar way that we ran it with pip, where we initiate with a exclamation point or a dollar sign and just hit shift enter. And we'll get the same thing, except instead of just a flat list, we'll get all we'll get the packages and then what they rely on. So just to take a look, hone in on something. So this package is the only other package it requires is NumPy. And we can see that other packages rely on many other underlying packages. And we can also hone in on these individual packages instead of listing them all out. So one way we could do this is we can go back to pip. One can put in pip show and let's say we want to check the packages that pandas relies on. So this gives us the pandas library, current version, short summary, home page for pandas. Then it gives us the required packages. So PyTZ, Python date util and numpy. And what this also gives us is packages that rely on pandas. And we can see that a lot of packages rely on pandas and it's a very, very popular module within Python. And we could do the same thing with pip dep tree. So if I put it in, and then I can put in dash p, and then I need to type in pandas again, and let's run this. And then I have the same thing, and then it gives me possible conflicting dependencies. So we don't really have to worry about this since Google really takes care of all of this for the web IDE. But if you're running this locally, this may be something you need to pay attention to, where there might be conflicting dependencies that you should take a look into. We can also visualize the dependencies with pip dep tree. And the way that we do that is initiate it with the exclamation point or the dollar sign. 
we need a dash P. We want to do this for pandas again. And we want to graph an output. So two dashes, and then I need to put in graph, and then a dash between graph and output. And I want to return this as a PNG. So this is going to be an image file. And then I need to name it. So I can name it dependencies.png. Let's run this. Great. And I can visualize this within Python and specifically within Jupyter. If you're running this in Anaconda locally or in Google Colab, you can call IPython and then display the image. And what we want to display is it's saved in the files folder for Google Colab. If you're running this locally, it'll probably be saved wherever you keep your Anaconda files. And this is pretty cool because it gives us a visualization of the packages that Pandas requires. So py, NumPy, dateutil, and pytz. And then dateutil also has a package that it relies on as well. Now, this isn't a large number of packages, but we can take a look at how this looks with TensorFlow. And we can overwrite this image. And then we'll run it again. And as we can see, TensorFlow is a very complex package that has a lot of dependencies. And not only does it depend on varying packages, but it also depends on varying versions of the packages. And this can prove to be a bit complicated when you're running this locally, which again is why if you're new to Python and you still want to do some deep learning or machine learning, then running this locally on an IDE or within a virtual environment may be better than installing all this on your local computer and potentially causing issues. I've definitely run into issues with TensorFlow and other deep learning packages locally, which is why I mi migrated towards a web IDE. Okay, so let's move on to how we can check this with Conda. And Conda, it doesn't come installed in Google Colab, so I have a package I'm going to use called Conda Lab. It's, if you want to read more about it, it's in the references and additional learning section. But this will load in Anaconda into Google Colab, and it will restart the kernel as well. Okay. So you'll get a notice that the kernel crashed. Don't worry about that. The kernel restarted because now we're going to be running Conda. And we can check that this went through, just running the cell again. And looks like we have Conda. Okay, so if we want to check all the packages within the Con Anaconda instance we have right now, we can type in Conda and list. And the packages we have vary just because we had to restart the kernel and the packages are just different from the ones that we had with uh, Python with Google Colab. Okay, so what we can do next if what I found useful and there's probably a few different ways that you could do this is a third party package did a decent job illustrating this, so I went with this one. So if you have conda, you can conda install dash c conda dash forge and finally conda tree. And this is the package that we are going to take a look at the conda tree package. Let's run that. Great, so we have that up. And this can do the same thing that we had for the previous pip and that we had for the pip depth tree. So 
let's take a look at a specific package that we have available in the Conda version that we're looking at. So I'll focus on the cryptography package since that's a field that I'm interested in. So if I scroll down and I'm going to run Conda tree, so exclamation point Conda dash tree. And I'm going to hit depends to get the dependencies dash T. And this is going to be for the cryptography package. Great. And we can see that it's similar to the pipped up tree where I have the various modules and packages that cryptography relies on and the versions. Well, I hope that this was useful. I included additional references and learning and if you're doing this yourself, I highly recommend reading through a few things. I've definitely had issues where my I've had to completely get rid of some IDEs just because it got way too messy with TensorFlow and Theano. So understanding how packages work is super valuable. And I highly recommend checking out these sites that I have listed if you are able to. And if you like the video, feel free to subscribe. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter, and GitHub. Thank you for watching everyone and happy coding.